I'm here with Garth Stein, author of The Art of Racing in the Rain. You've got to get this book. It is an amazing <laughs> book. But now it's been made into a major motion picture. And Garth's here to tour and talk about the picture and the book. So three and a half years on the bestseller list. That's right, 161 Ooh. weeks. That's crazy. Do, the you did the that. math. Yeah. You're really good at math, too. He's writing, you can write, and you can do math. No, no, it's in the New York Times. They do the math for you. <laughs> Even better. So what do you attribute to the success of this, the longevity? I don't know. You know, there, there's obviously, it's a book that it has cars, which everyone loves cars, and it's got dogs. Everyone loves dogs. It's got relationships. It's got humor. It's got uh, uh, tragedy. You know, there's highs and lows. And so what do we attribute it to? I, I, over the years, all I can think is that the voice of Enzo is something who is the narrator of the book and is the dog of the book, is this compelling voice that people just feel attached to. They they love Enzo. They want to hear more of Enzo's opinions. They, he's a very opinionated dog. He's got a lot of judgment, and sometimes he's right, and sometimes he's not so right. But he still, we love him so much. We're always going to take his side and say, no, no, he's definitely right. So absolutely, and you know he's different. This is really cool about this book and the movie. So he's different in the book. I mean, he's a different breed. Different kind of dog, yeah. And then in the movie, he's a golden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then across the country, he's different on every book cover. Yeah, he's, he's different, and that's important to you. Well, when I was writing the book, I didn't want to be too specific about what he looked like because I knew people who. First of all, I kind of knew already that dog people are crazy. I don't know if you knew this. <laughs> They like are so passionate. Yes. <laughs> They're so passionate about their dogs, right? And so I knew that they all wanted to uh, kind of populate the book with, you know, when you read a book, you, you imagine who's playing what and what act, maybe an actor, you put an actor in a part. Well, with a dog, the same thing, and people want to use their own dog in there. So I gave some loose description of him and like a little bit of a breed, but he's not quite sure even what he, what he is. And so, uh, but they make a movie out of it you know, they have to use a dog. That's a big one. So, yeah, and so the, it, there was a little bit of a speed issue with uh, making the movie because uh, Milo Ventimiglia is in it and he has other obligations. <laughs> this is us. And so... <laughs> <laughs> on NBC. On NBC. Which is our state. <laughs> <laughs> so they had to get the film in the can before he had to go back to his TV show. Okay. So they needed to use dogs that were already trained up. And so there were some really great golden retrievers out there. So. Well, and... You just told me an interesting fact in the green room that the dog that's on the original book cover, okay, this is the movie cover yeah, that they're the using, movie tie -in, right. but the original paperback version yeah. has a Denver dog That's right. on the cover. That's His right. name is Buddy. Buddy the dog from Denver, yes. Well, we were trying to get Buddy here today, but... Yeah, it didn't work out, but, just, you know, but he's getting old now, so you know. Big, you Buddy know? was kind of a pup when 11 years ago or 10 years ago when the paperback came out, and yeah. now Buddy's, you know, 11 years old. And and uh, it's fun, though, because I'm, I'm friendly with his family, and uh, when I come into an event at my favorite bookstore, The Tattered Cover, Ooh. oftentimes Buddy will make a surprise uh, visit, so it's always good to see Buddy. It's really cool. Now, let's, let's move from the book into the film. Mm -hmm. You were on set for some of the production. You yeah. got to kind of collaborate a little with the director. Your three sons actually have extra piece, extra roles. Uh -huh. They're they're in one of the race scenes. Yeah, yeah, in a pit stop. So, yeah. how was the process taking the book to the big screen? How did that feel for you? Were you comfortable with that? What did you love? What was kind of surprising? Well, they, they didn't. I wasn't really that involved in it um, because you know they had, they have their own ways of doing things, and uh, they had a great screenwriter Mark Bombach doing the screenplay and. Um, you know, I think they were a little concerned that I was only going to cost them money if I got involved <laughs> because I would be like, oh no, it has to be a 150 foot tower, not just a little 10 foot tower, you know, and suddenly the sure. producer's like going, ah, he's killing me. So uh, I, I kind of stayed clear of it, um, which was fine for me. And what was fun is going up to visit the set and meeting the stars. They treated us really nice. My 89 year old grandmother, my mother who's 89, I brought her up, it was in Vancouver because I live in Seattle and, and they treated us super nice and it was just a lot of fun. My, my boys, I have three sons, uh, 23, 20 and 12 and they're not impressed by much. They were impressed by visiting the set. So, well, you know, good. yeah, I, finally their old man did something, you know, of legitimate, right? <laughs> Oh, I think you're very legitimate. This is, this is the big deal. I mean, you've got the brass ring, the bestseller, and the movie. I think kind of hit it. It's cool, you know, it's funny, because as like I always said to people, you know, a movie, does, a book doesn't become more legitimate because it's made into a movie, you know? It's, it's, the book is the book. Still, when it's a movie, it's cool, because it's like around, and everyone sees it, and they're talking about it, and you can you look up, and oh, there's a bus. It's got my, my book on the side of it. So it's, it is a lot of fun to, to, in, to indulge in that. Well, let's dig into the characters really quickly. Yeah. So, Denny. 
Just, yeah. just tell me about him. Imagine Milo Ventimiglia as a race car driver. He is, he embodies Denny. You know, he's a steadfast guy. He's, he implies his uh, techniques of becoming successful on the racetrack to his personal life, balance, anticipation, patience. That's how he lives his life. He's always looking for his opportunity. In racing, you can't rush things. If you try to force the situation, that's when you're gonna end up in trouble. And Denny always uh, manages to use his balance and his patience to kind of wait for his moment to act. In a sense, if you, if you look at the book on a more like literary level, I would say that, that Denny, the character, and Enzo, the dog, are sort of alter egos of each other. Together, they make a perfect character. And since Enzo is more impulsive and he just wants to, he's rash and he's, he's spirited and he's judgmental and he, he just wants to get things done at some point um, in the story, both in the book and in the movie, he says, I just want to go get little Zoe and we're going to steal away, we're going to drive up to Canada and escape and go do some, there's a great Formula One race up there we can go visit. You know, he, but, but he, Denny doesn't, Denny doesn't want, he's more rational than that, right? Yeah. So together they make sort of the perfect person. So in a way they, uh, they couldn't exist without each other. Now uh, Enzo's the sage. He's mm -hmm. kind of, he's, he's, you know, and he loves TV. Which he loves is, TV. Which is awesome. Yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah. a great, I thought that was a great character bit for him to, yeah. to, to, to get connected to tell. I just thought that was really cool. Um, but what, let's go beyond a little bit with Enzo. You've got Kevin Costner voicing Enzo. Mm -hmm. I asked you also earlier, did you really picture him, as you were writing the book, did you picture someone like Kevin Costner as the voice? And you're telling me, no. Well, I don't really, my mind doesn't work that way. I mean, I love movies and all that. I, I can't remember an actor. Trust me, the people who've been traveling with me this for this past week, I say, what was that movie? And there was an actor and there were freckles and they're <laughs> like, w I just can't, I don't have that kind of mind. Um, so I wasn't really uh, thinking character specific. That being said, in the book, Enzo does believe that if he did have a human voice, he would sound like James Earl Jones. Oh. Now apparently, James Earl Jones was unavailable. <laughs> I know, I don't, I don't, they, didn't, they did not go to James Earl Jones. But they, did, they asked Kevin Costner and he, he said he would do it. And when they told me, I, was, I first thought, hmm, I'm not sure. But I went to the YouTube. There's this great thing called YouTube. The YouTube? The YouTube. Okay. And I, uh, I looked at uh, clips from Field of Dreams and heard his voiceover in that. And I thought, that is an inspired casting decision. So I think it was great. Yeah, I think he, he does convey that sense of curiosity mm -hmm. and wisdom. Yeah. And I think it's I think it's a good picture. Yeah, too. that kind of that, that, that innocence so, and yet also that sage mentality. Yeah. But he also has a relationship already, Kevin Costner, with the p American public, with the world public, and is from his movies. We trust Kevin Costner, yeah. and we need to trust Enzo if we're going to believe the story. Cool. I, I love that we dove so deep into that. That is yeah. really cool. I, I loved your perspective. Um, okay, let's dig a little deeper. All right. So I'm ready. this book has love. It has loss. Mm. It, it's it's a message of perseverance and getting through and mm -hmm. continuing through your life. How did that? How did that guide you? What? Why is the racing in the rain a guiding principle for this, for well, this book? When you go racing, and I raced for a number of years with Sports Car Club of America, I drove a spec Miata. When you go racing, they say, the first thing they say to you is, listen, we're not gonna, we don't care whose fault it is if there's an incident on the racetrack. It doesn't matter whose fault it is. We don't have time to adjudicate every incident that happens. You, you fix the damage to your car, the other driver fixes the damage to his or her car, and we're not gonna, we don't care whose fault it was. Whereas in our world here on the streets outside in Denver, we're always you know, blaming, you, know, you cut me off, you made me do this, you took that turn too tight, and so we're always you know, assessing blame. In racing, you're not allowed to assess blame, and therefore that falls away, and you're relying on yourself. So self-reliance is a big theme in this book, which is, it doesn't matter how you got where you are, the question is, how are you gonna better your position on the racetrack? Mm -hmm. And if you wanna take the racetrack and make it a metaphor for life, hint, hint, hint it hint. works, right? It does work. Well, I wanna say, it, this book got very personal for me very fast. My brother Joe is a race car driver. Well, he's a, he's, he builds race cars. Oh, that's cool. He has a dog named Enzo, of course, nice. inspired by Enzo Ferrari. Nice. Um, and he did lose his wife recently, oh. it's the same, so there are so, so many parallels. That, I didn't want to do a spoiler I, alert for the movie. I shouldn't have, but, um, yeah. but um, That's right. just keep going. <laughs> we'll just keep, keep going, going. Keep we'll going. just keep talking. <laughs> but it, it, it resonates so much with so many people, I believe yeah. on so many levels. Um, I bet you have so many coming up to you and expressing 
how this book helped them, how this book inspired them. Well, that's kind of the, the joy of literature. That's why I love being a writer, is that every book is read individually. It's a very personal experience, and everyone reads a book through his or her own values and experiences, and they, they get something different out of it. You know, they plug into it for a different reason. Maybe it's the dog, maybe it's the race car, maybe it's the family situation. Um, everybody comes at it a different way, and that's, everybody's right. That's what's so lovely about it. That's what I love about literature is that we can all re experience the same thing, have different opinions about it, and agree to talk about them in a book club or something, and nobody's yelling at each other, and nobody's filibustering, and no one's fighting with each other, and that's why all book clubs should be replace Congress of the United States, because we'll get something done. <laughs> Not is. to get political or anything. You're very Enzo about that. That was very Enzo, by yeah, the way. It's an Enzo wisdom, moment. wisdom. Garth Stein, in a, in a it's very good, Piece of advice. Yeah, well. Take note, yeah. everyone. Okay, so. <laughs> We're coming for you, Congress. And here, I'm gonna ask you for more advice. <laughs> okay. Okay, so there are gonna be people watching who are like, you did it, you did the, the bestseller, you got the movie. Right. There are writers out there going, gee, I wish that would yeah. be me. You know, yeah, I know, what, I know. how did you navigate, um, there isn't a, like you said, there's no sure way to do this. Because right. if everybody, did, if, if it was that easy to do, everyone would do it. Right. But what do you do when, what do, what do you tell, how do you inspire people who are thinking, Maybe I could do this. Yeah, well, first of all, the first thing that I say to them is, I wrote two books before The Art of Racing in the Rain that were published and got reviewed and everything else, and nobody read them, and nobody's heard of them. And then I wrote The Art of Racing in the Rain, and that became a thing. Now, why did that become a thing? I don't know. We have to kind of trust our instincts a lot when we're writing. We have to trust our subconscious. And hopefully we're, we're tapped into the zeitgeist, you know, we're, that we're writing something that society wants to uh, vibrate with at that moment. And so I really think that we have to trust our instincts and we have to have approach things with discipline, just like we would on a racetrack. We have to work hard. We have to make the sacrifices. We have to do the job, and then we have to, uh, hope, you know, m hope that we're listening to what's going on in the world in a way that can can come together for us. Great, I, I appreciate you taking the time to come down. It's my pleasure. This is so exciting, Garth Stein, everyone, the author of *The Art of Racing in the Rain*. Go see the movie. Go get the book. And this is so exciting. Thank you so this much is fun. for coming. Thank you. I appreciate your time. <laughs> my pleasure.